Um, let's move on to this one, Annabelle. Parents should not be allowed to pull their kids out of sex education. Young pupils need it to keep them safe. If they do, they might miss out on learning things like this. Finally, boys have testicles. Testicles grow during puberty, and it's important to make sure they are healthy. Has it gone yet? Uh, I, I do apologise, Annabelle, that there was a, a picture of a willy on our screen there. Uh, but nonetheless, some testicular education is, is crucial, and you can't pull your kids out of sex education. What do you make of that? Well, I have some sympathy with this argument. I think sex education is a really important thing for children to learn. And I think it's also a very difficult thing for parents to teach. Uh, there's a strong case for teachers taking charge and they will be the experts and they'll be able to inform children perhaps in a way that, that won't make them cringe as much as they would if it were their mum or dad uh, trying to pass the information on. So there's a strong case for it and they can learn some really important things about uh, their own biology. But you know, at the same time, Ian, what we have seen in recent years is sex education being captured by trans extremists. We've had examples of pupils in schools uh, being taught um, that, you know, the, the biological fact is controversial, yeah. um, and it, that men can have wombs and are able to menstruate and give birth. And that's not what most people would consider to be necessary, uh, important sex education. Rather, you know, it's teaching them about their bodies, it's teaching them to be safe, uh, teaching them not to be embarrassed, actually. Um, and my concern is that we've strayed quite far from that with RSE. Yeah, I wonder, and you're right, the parent thing is always tricky. I mean, my 10-year-old, if two people on TV are kissing, I mean, it's the most... I can't wait for a kissing scene to come up. Even it's very innocent, nothing adult about it, uh, because he dies on the spot at the thought. The cushion goes up. Oh, my God, he says. He doesn't want to see any of that. So the idea of me sitting down with him saying, I think we need to have a chat about this, although, you know, they do a fair bit at school, as it turns out. But it's... Yeah, you're right. It's a tricky one for parents, isn't it, to go there? Uh, but I certainly won't be telling him that 120 genders exist. No, exactly. I mean, I, I do think that parents still have some responsibility to teach their children about the birds and the bees and call me old fashioned, but I think that yeah. fathers perhaps have a, a duty to teach their sons to be very respectful of women and mothers perhaps have the responsibility to tell their children to be careful, although perhaps it doesn't need to go down those gender lines. Indeed. Um, but but nonetheless, you want to prepare your children for the world uh, in, in all the ways that you possibly can. Um, but I do think that there is an important responsibility on schools and on teachers yeah. um, not, and, and not to confuse them about all this um, and to just have you know, a whole sensible discussion. And as you say, in one that doesn't involve, um, you know, centering a syllabus around the fact that there are 72 genders that children can identify as. Yeah, and that's just on a bad day. Listen, um, Annabelle, thank you as ever. Annabelle Denham, Deputy Comment Editor over there at The Telegraph with us on the programme. Uh, we'll talk to a former prisoner in a moment, reference that question, how do you solve prison overcrowding? 0344 499 1000.